Welcome into New York Giants Now by Chat Sports. I'm your host, Marshall Green. We're going to be talking some cap cut candidates that the Giants could let go of to create some cap space in today's show. But first, make sure to give me a follow over on Twitter at Marshall Green underscore. I want to follow back some Giants fans over there. So give me a follow, and I'm going to follow back the first 10 people that DM me. I know ball. That way I know you know ball, and we could talk about the Giants this offseason. Today's show, like I said a couple of seconds ago, five players that the Giants could cut in order to create more cap space, which the Giants sit at right now $47.5 million, but they do got to re-sign Daniel Jones. They are going to have to make a decision on Saquon Barkley. They're going to have to pay Andrew Thomas here soon enough, as well as Dexter Lawrence and maybe even Xavier McKinney this offseason. So the Giants have... Some spots where they're going to have to spend some money, and they may want to create some more money. That way they can sign a couple of players in NFL free agency. We know Joe Shane wants to build through the draft, but you can definitely build at a couple of spots and improve at those spots in free agency. It's going to be exciting. I'm excited for the offseason. Let's get to the bulk of today's show. The first player that I think everybody thinks will be cut by Big Blue is Kenny Galladay. Just finished his second season with Big Blue. He has a cap hit of $21.4 million for the 2023 season. And that's just too high of a number to keep him on this roster. If the Giants do decide to move on from Galladay, they will save $6.7 million in cap space. They'll also have a dead cap hit of $14.7 million, which means even though you release him, you're, he's still going to be taken up $14.7 million on your cap sheet. That way, you at least have 6.7 in cap savings. It just didn't work out for Galladay here in New York when he put on the big blue jersey. The past two seasons were somewhat of a nightmare, but this season was really as bad as it gets for Galladay. I mean, he was only targeted 17 times. He had 81 yards on six receptions, and he finally scored his first touchdown and only touchdown as a member of the G-Men in the last game of the regular season when the backups were playing against the Philadelphia Eagles. It didn't work out. I think he's just washed at this point. The injuries have caught up to him. He was never the most explosive guy. Had that hip injury as well as the ankle injury and the knee injury. Sprained his MCL here with the Giants as well. It just didn't work out. Should they Giants cut Kenny Galladay though? What do you think? Do you think you should try to, try to bring him back? No, nah, you got to cut him. Type Y for yes, type N for no. We got four more cut candidates to get to, but I do want to let you guys know that here at New York Giants Now by Chat Sports, we put out videos every single day on the latest news and rumors, and you guys should go down right now and hit that big red sub button. We just crossed over 24,000 subscribers. We're trying to get to 25,000 subscribers as soon as possible. We'll be live for NFL free agency as well as the NFL draft. You're one, we are your one-stop shop. All, all off season long. Go to youtube.com slash TV or just hit that big red button underneath the video. Cap, num, cap, cap cut candidate number two. A little bit of a tongue twister there. Maybe I should just get my shit together. Leonard Williams is a guy that I think the Giants could at least talk about moving on from. I wouldn't move on from him, but when you have a cap hit of $20.2 million, it's always going to be a discussion, especially with Leonard Williams somewhat taking a step back this year, which was unfortunate for him. And I think he kind of knew that, and he may have said to the media that he might be willing to take a cap, uh, cap uh, cut, uh, a restructure of his contract. Jeez, Louise, I can't speak. It's Friday. He says, I love this team, and I want to play for them for sure, and I want to play alongside Dexter Lawrence for as long as possible. I would probably consider a pay cut. I definitely love this team, and I want to be here. That's the word I was looking for, a pay cut. So he just told the media, I might have to take a pay cut, and I'd be willing to do it. And Joe Shane, he was a fan of when he said that because he said, I just saw that before I came down here when he had his media availability a couple of days ago. He said that he would be interested in taking a pay cut. You guys did a good job on that. Whoever asked him that, he didn't mention that and the exit interview with us. Of course, of course, Leonard Williams did not talk about taking a pay cut from Big Blue, and he might have to. I don't think they should cut him whatsoever, but I do think it will be a topic of conversation for the Giants' front office. If you cut him, you save $12 million, and if you do cut him, you have a dead cap hit of $20.2 million as well. They could definitely do it. I wouldn't do it, though, because I still believe there's an elite player 
here in Leonard Williams. Only had 45 tackles last year, five tackles for loss, two and a half sacks, 33 QB pressures, but we never really got to see what this defensive line would have and could have been at full strength with Leonard Williams, Aziz Ojolari, Kayvon Thibodeau, and Dexter Lawrence. I don't think those guys ever played a full four quarters together, and I'd love to see that next year. I think that could be a strength of this team, and I'd love to see Leonard Williams back. So I would decide to keep him. I would go down in the comment section and type Mike K for keep. I'd hold on to Leonard Williams, but I want to hear from the real ones right now. Let me know what you think. Is $20 million too much on the books? Type C for cut. Type K for keep. I want to hear from you down in the comment section. We got three more cap cuts to get to coming up in a second. But first, I want to tell you about our proud sponsor, Athletic Greens. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. That link is in the comments and description of today's show. I gave AG1 a try because I wanted better gut health and wanted a supplement that actually tastes great. I take AG1 in the morning and it makes me feel ready to take on my day. AG1 empowers the gut for whole body health, which is something that I need. I start the day with making one great choice, AG1, and more healthy decisions than follow. Covering my nutritional basis for the day literally couldn't be easier, which is why I trust Athletic Greens. I just mix one small scoop of AG1 with water and drink it first thing each morning. I also absolutely love that it costs less than $3 a day. It's a really effective daily habit with the highest quality sourced ingredients. If a comprehensive solution is what you need from your supplement routine, then Athletic Greens is giving you a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free travel packs with your first purchase. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. The link is right there. It's also in the comments and description of today's show. Promotes gut health, supports immunity, and boosts energy. I love Athletic Greens. You are going to love it as well. Go to athleticgreens.com slash chat sports. Kind of a sneaky one right here. And a player that, in my opinion, has just never lived up to the hype. He was an absolute offseason winner and training camp winner for Big Blue. And that is Darnay Holmes, the slot corner. He has a cap hit of $2.7 million heading into the 2023 season. And if the Giants do select or elect, excuse me, to cut Darnay Holmes, they would have a full cap savings of $2.7 million and only a dead cap hit of one hundred ninety-seven dollars So if you decide you want to move on from Darnay Holmes, you could do it really easily, and there's really not any negative on the cap going forward. I think he's a good player. I just don't know if he is a starting caliber, caliber nickel corner on an elite defense. So many times we saw him just get beat deep. I mean, he allowed 10.6 yards per catch this year. He had a PFF grade of 43.7. He allowed a completion percentage of 61.2 when targeted. Didn't have an interception. He's a great tackling and run-stopping nickel corner, but I don't know if he's a guy that really can elevate a defense. The Giants have to get better in the back end, and if you get $2.7 million from him, Pair that with a couple more million dollars. You can get an elite starting inside slot corner. I like Darnay Holmes. I think his time with Big Blue might be up. Two offensive linemen I believe the Giants could look to move on from. And these guys have just kind of been bit by the injury bug. And that first starts with Shane Lemieux and Matt Peart. Both players have a cap hit of $1 million. And for Shane Lemieux, a guy that's played in just two regular season ball games in the past two seasons, look, the foot injury has just not been kind to Shane Lemieux. He's dealt with that now for two seasons. The best ability is availability. Smart, dependable, and tough. That's the three words that Joe Shane and Brian Dable always go by. And you can't be dependable if you've only played in two games out of the past 34 uh, chances. And if you cut him, you get a whole million dollars in cap space and you only have a dead cap hit of 87 k Matt Pierre, it's kind of the same boat, just didn't work out. He's kind of been bit by the injury bug as well. And he really hasn't lived up to the hype being that third round pick out of UConn under Dave Gettleman. He has a cap savings of a million dollars and has a little bit higher of a dead cap hit than Lemieux at 208K. But there's also players on this roster that kind of make them expendable. Because you have Ben Bredesen and you got Joshua Zudu at left guard who are all going to be above Shane Lemieux going into the offseason. Marcus McKeith in the second year player out of North Carolina, he's ahead of Shane Lemieux on the interior offensive line depth. And they like Wyatt Davis. They've claimed him twice now to the practice squad and he's on a futures deal. Um, Phillips is a backup tackle. 
The only way I see them keeping Matt Pear is just because they want a swing tackle that's been in this system for a while. But there's other people like Jack Anderson that they've had play tackle before. And I could see them signing a veteran um, pretty much at the same cost at Matt Pear. Will be interesting to see. I do think the Giants do move on from a couple of guys we talked about. Kenny Galladay for sure. Shane Lemieux for sure. I think Darnay Holmes and Matt Pear have a good chance. They might move on from Leonard Williams. I would not. I don't think they will, but there's definitely a chance there. When any time your cap number and, you know, the savings are that high, they're always going to look at it, especially a guy that's getting closer and closer to 30 years old. I gave you five guys. Maybe I'm missing someone, or maybe you agree with someone I talked about in today's show. I want you to name someone you think the Giants could cut to create more cap space heading in to NFL free agency, which is really about a month away at this point. I appreciate everybody for tuning in today. It's Friday afternoon here, and uh, we're getting you guys a video. No other channel is doing that videos every single day. Also, make sure to hit me up on Twitter. I want to talk ball with some real ones. Send me that DM, because the first 10 people that do, I'm going to give a follow back, and we're going to start talking ball. Just DM me. I know ball.